Hello guys, welcome to Everything Metallurgy and welcome to day 16 of 100 days 100 concepts and today we are going to discuss about Gibbs phase rule. So basically we all know what is the common form of this Gibbs phase rule. So usually we know it is something like this where we write F is equal to C minus P plus 2. Right. So this is the most common form of Gibbs phase rule. Now what are these different F, C and P? So F is nothing but my degrees of freedom. C is the number of components. And P is the number of phases that are present in my system. So what are these degree of freedom, number of components and number of phases? So we will go one by one. So what is a phase? So I, I think you all remember the famous uh, definition of a phase which tells you that a phase is a homogeneous part or homogeneous portion of my system okay so usually uh, there is a big definition which says chemically homogeneous physically distinct and mechanically separable so these three states i mean these three you know characteristics you can say we call it as a phase okay so you can have many number of types you know, solid liquid gas these are different kinds of phases right similarly in solids also let's say you have alpha fe and uh, you know gamma fe so these two are different phases because these two of course they have same uh, composition you can say you you can say that they have same state that is solid but they have different crystal structure okay they have different crystal structure so because of that difference in crystal structure these two are basically taken as two different phases okay so this is about uh, what is a phase now comes component so what is a component so basically component of a system will tell you about the minimum number of minimum number of you know um, constituents minimum number of constituents that are used or uh, by means of these particular minimum number of constituents you can easily tell the composition of each phase that is involved in an equilibrium so what is a component the number of components are nothing but the number of minimum number of constituents okay that allow you to explain about composition of each and every phase in my system of course at equilibrium okay the minimum number of constituents to explain the composition of each phase that is present at the equilibrium okay so usually we have many kinds of processes especially in uh, metallurgy okay usually we can see that the number of components are equal to the number of elements that are present in a system of course there may be a uh, compounds also that can be expressed okay of course uh, compounds are also counted in terms of components okay we'll uh, just take an example and see how the components are uh, calculated or so okay so what is the other one so yeah one best example to calculate this is let's take slag which has feo and sao2 okay let's assume so here slag let's say it, we have a liquid slag okay so here liquid is the phase whereas FeO and SiO2 are the two phases that are uh, sorry two components that are present in my system but what is the number of components so here let's say we only have FeO and SiO2 that means it's a binary system so we need the minimum number of constituents so let's say this is A and this is B and A plus B is equal to 100 percentage so if I know A automatically I can get B okay so my minimum number of constituent that i require to explain the composition of my system is one in this particular uh, example right so always in binary 
if you have a and b so that's why we write x a plus x b is equal to 1 correct so if you know x a you can easily get the other one which is unknown okay so this is an example to explain uh, how we can say uh, how we can get the number of components correct now before going to further example i also quickly want to tell you what is degrees of freedom so or uh, these are also called free variables sometimes okay so this degree of freedom is nothing but the number of independent variables number of independent variables that are required to define the whole system okay so using these particular independent variables we can easily define our whole system okay so basically what are the variables that we have so usually the variables that we deal with are basically pressure and temperature okay and the third important thing is composition okay of course chemical potential and all the other stuff activities can be taken but uh, these are the three main things okay which are nothing but the variables but uh, the form which we saw here c minus p plus 2 is used for okay before discussing that how did we get this so this f is equal to the number of total variables that you have in your system minus the fixed variables so that is when you usually get it right so usually total variables are nothing but uh, p into c minus 1 plus 2 okay minus c into p minus 1 okay this is what you basically get so from this what you get you get c minus p plus 2 so what is this total variable and fixed variable so if you see this particular term over here which i wrote is giving my total variables how so let's say you have some p number of phases okay so if i have uh, let's say three phases in a system okay to express the composition okay to express the composition of a system how many uh, variables you require okay so let's say three into components so as i already said let's say we have only two phases and three components okay so we are talking about a ternary system okay so a b and c let's assume so if you know the composition of a and composition of b you can easily calculate the c how just by doing 100 minus the sum of a and b correct so that is represented by c minus 1 the total number of components that are present in my system minus 1 into the number of phases because of course we are and defining the composition of each phase correct so this particular term p into c minus 1 is giving you what is giving you about the information about the composition variable and this plus 2 you can see here right this 2 plus 2 is telling me the other two pressure and variable okay so now i have uh, dealt with all the composition terms pressure and temperature so this is my total variable right and fixed variable so usually at equilibrium we usually see at equilibrium right all this stuff so at equilibrium we all know that if you just take you know chemical potential let's say of a is equal in all the phases at equilibrium correct this is nothing but the definition of equilibrium similarly the other things other components for b and c so what is it telling is if you know if you know the you know uh, the variable in one particular component okay, what is the component over here a okay if you take in one particular component you can easily tell about all the other stuff why because at equilibrium it's equal correct so in that manner you can easily also write the fixed variables are this because why is it fixed because at equilibrium you know that all these are 
equal only it will be in equilibrium when all this stuff will be followed okay so that's how we got it and what is the definition of degrees of freedom these are the independent variables that are required to us okay that is required for us to define a complete state of a system or you know whatever so that's why we get the degrees of freedom by subtracting fixed variables from total variables so i hope you understood how the gibbs phase rule has been formed or you can say this is a short derivation you can also uh, take it as now that in many of the books or even in previous year uh, questions and all this stuff you see something called a condensed phase rule okay condensed phase rule is nothing but when we deal when we want to study a system at constant temperature right at a constant temperature oh, sorry i'm extremely sorry at constant pressure right so usually we perform every metallurgical process almost even anything at one <coughs> sorry at one atmosphere pressure right so what it means is whatever we took in the variables it will be subtracted by one more variable because pressure is also fixed pressure is also getting fixed over here so what will be my gibbs phase rule now it will be f is equal to c minus p plus 2 minus 1 so it will be 1 okay this is known as condensed gibbs phase rule or at a constant pressure okay why we subtracted that one from this because we are also fixing the pressure variable okay that's the reason why we are doing it correct now one uh, important example dissociation of cso3 okay so as you can see this is a solid this is a solid and this is a gas so what is the number of phases okay these are usually reaction kind of uh, you know calculation reaction variables or whatever how we can calculate the components in it so you can easily see the number of phases how much is the number of phase we have solid cso3 solid cao and gaseous co2 so these are the three phases that we have in our system what about components so for reaction based uh, calculation what you can easily do is we can see calculate c as n minus r what is n n is the number of species that are involved in a reaction and r is nothing but the number of relation between them or you can say independent reactions Okay, what are the number of reactions my species are involved in? So here in this particular case, C will be how much? So species are three, one, two, three, three minus what is the reaction? Only one reaction we have, so it is one. So this is equal to two. Okay, so P is three and C is two, and obviously at we want F, which is equal to C minus P plus two. This is equal to two minus three plus two. that's equal to my 1 okay so what do you think is this particular variable so in this particular case this is my temperature why temperature because if temperature is varying obviously my partial pressure of co2 varies because it's a gas correct so with that the pressure of the system can automatically be known okay so the pressure and temperature are interlinked over here not only this reaction you can take any example so let's say you have m solid metal plus half o2 gives rise to mo okay or the backward reaction whatever it is okay the same form if you can see it's uh, more of a same form where you have a gas and a solid which is giving rise to another solid so in vein in this case you get f is equal to 1 which is a temperature why because as the temperature changes the partial pressure of the gas also changes which is allowing you to obviously um, study the system correct so temperature is the variable which you get over here 
so i hope uh, you got some idea about gibbs phase rule how you got the gibbs phase rule and one of the classic example or you can say you know many previous year questions have this particular question also as uh, a physical metallurgy perspective or you know any kind of uh, thermodynamic aspect you can always do this for phase diagrams correct so i want you to take any you know eutectic diagram okay and calculate okay and calculate the different stuff and obviously these eutectic phase diagrams are usually calculated at a fixed pressure okay at a fixed pressure so these are condensed equilibrium diagrams so you have to use the second one f is equal to c minus p plus 1 wala okay so i hope uh, you understood okay so what i want you to do is just go take some one of some example of eutectic phase diagram and see what and how is my f changing with p of, of course the components will be the same uh, during i mean in the whole system but how my f is changing with p so you will observe from this formula also you can easily say that f if you increase f p should decrease okay so in that sense if you want p max then f is equal to 0 okay so you find many previous year questions asking this also what are the number of maximum phases that are possible in my system so that means that they are asking you to calculate the number of phases when the degrees of freedom is equal to 0 right similarly in other sense uh, if you want f max then you must get p minimum and obviously p can be 0 if p is 0 uh, there is nothing over there there is no phase present so this is what 1 so f max will always be equal to how much c minus 1 plus 2 okay if you are talking about uh, the regular formula so this will be c plus 1 okay so uh, this is one more relation important relation which i want you to do it okay by taking any phase diagram and so i hope you understood today's concept of gibbs phase rule if you like our video please hit the like button and also share with many gate metallurgy aspirants and do visit our website visit our website everythingmetallurgy.com to grab one of the most affordable test series and one of the best gate guidance program for each and every of you every one of you no matter uh, which year you are in either you are doing any job or anything anybody can just you know can get benefited because of this particular course and obviously it helps you to crack gate mt 2021 of course we also have for gate mt 2022 so i hope uh, you understood what is gibbs phase rule and with this i want to end this video thanks a lot for watching thank you guys meet you tomorrow with one more interesting concept